right, we've been looking at stability, and we looked at the subject of stability for, continu for continuous time systems. Now what about discrete time systems? And also, what about linear time invariant systems? So first we're going to start off with discrete time systems. So we have a system, S, in this case discrete time. Notice it's only a function of X, not a, there's no input here. We're just looking at how the state responds to itself. And again, we would assume a candidate Lyapunov function that is positive definite, a positive definite function, just like with continuous time. Instead, however, of using the derivative at, uh, of v of x, we look at the difference of the system along the trajectory of the system. So instead of the derivative, we look at the difference. So delta v of x is equal to v of x at time t plus 1 minus v of x of t x of t plus 1 is equal to f of x of t. So we have that situation. And so if v is locally positive definite, that is, it is a candidate, and if the difference along the trajectory of the system s is locally negative definite, then v is a Lyapunov function for the system s, and the system is locally asymptotically stable. So by way of example, here's a nonlinear system. It's a discrete time system. We have this candidate Lyapunov function, which is the norm of x squared. And we can see that it is positive definite and radially unbounded. We take the difference along the system trajectory. So v of f of x of t minus v of x of t. So this is, this is the uh, f of t. So it, notice here I have x2 and x1. Both are divided by the same quantity, 1 plus x2 squared. So as a, as a vector, this is this quantity in the denominator dividing the vector x2 and x1. So that's where, that's where this comes from. So we actually get this quantity coming out. And again, v of x is the norm of x. And so you can show that all of this, I can factor out the norm of x, v of x in this case, and I get this quantity. And so I can see that this quantity in general, in general, this quantity will be less than uh, 1. For, and for actually, for any x2 that's not 0, this will be less strictly less than 1 in which case this quantity is strictly negative when x2 is 0 this will be 1 and so this will be equal to 0 and so that's why this function is lo globally negative semi-definite so this tells us that this system is stable in the sense of Lyapunov we don't have this we don't have uh, the, the knowledge that it is strictly um, stable what about exponential stability? So if v of x of t is locally positive definite, and if the d derivative or difference of v along the system trajectory is locally negative definite, and for continuous time, we've seen this guy already. In discrete time, we now have this guy. So there's this inequality for some alpha greater than 0. Then the Lyapunov function of the system uh, then v is a Lyapunov function of the system, and it is locally exponentially stable. So this shows that not only is the derivative or the difference a negative definite function, but it's actually bounded by the, uh, the actual original v. So in continuous time, we have this as our solution. Okay. So basically, the fact that v dot is less than or equal to minus alpha v tells us, so notice we actually, if you consider equality here, we have a first order differential equation. So, but in, in because of the fact we have inequality, we actually get this as our, as our differential equation. So we know that V of T goes uh, to zero exponentially fast. In discrete time, if our derivative, if our difference is less than or equal to 1 minus alpha, um, then we actually have this difference equation. 
It's like, now, how come I have 1 minus alpha raised to the power t as opposed to just minus alpha raised to the power t? Well, the reason is that delta v is equal to v of x of t plus 1 minus v of x of t. So there's actually a v of x of t on this side and on this side. So I take it over to the other side, and that's how we get this difference equation. Now, it turns out that this quantity, 1 minus alpha, in fact, must be an, a quantity less than 1. And I'll leave that to you to figure out why, why that must be so. So this is the, this is the basic stability question for both, for, for discrete time systems. And we've actually seen now a comparison with continuous time systems in terms of exponential stability. We're going to now move on to talk about the, the situation for linear time invariant systems.